Hey everyone, it's actually Jeb Bush, and today I'm with my best UFC friend, Seth Anderson, the awesome possum. And we're going to take a look at the UFC marketplace and how we think you sh it should be attacked. We're going to talk about some of the underpriced moments that we're seeing, some of the moments that we think might come down a little bit, and overall what we think is going to happen to the marketplace after the Adesanya drop. So we have to spend $500 net spend in order to qualify for this Adesanya moment. It sounds like you've already you've already done that, Seth, uh, which is awesome. I'm sitting at about like 250-ish net spend right now. So I have a little more I need to spend. And I was looking through the marketplace and you and I were talking and saying we should put together kind of where we think we see some market inefficiencies. So right off the bat, if you're watching this and you have spent some or spent very little, my first suggestion would obviously be to complete the entire series zero set uh, and then figure out how much you've spent off of that. <clears throat> because I think this set is super cool to have me maybe as a collector and use a collector two set. Like I have to be a completionist, like even though like I don't necessarily need or want a Sanders moment. I, I had to have one for the series, you know? So I think Thank God or Sanders would be nothing. Literally. Yeah. I don't know. It's terrible for him. I hate it. Exactly. So once you've done that, if you're trying to get this out of Sonia moment, get your net spinned up, let's talk about some of the moments we see that we think might be a little undervalued or might have some room to run. Or most importantly, when the Adesanya airdrop happens and everyone gets their reward that don't completely fall off a cliff because everyone's like, well, now I can sell because I wasn't selling anything before because I didn't want to make it harder to get my net spin to 500. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I completely understand what you mean. And I think it's a, a really good point. And I think it might be it might be strange, but we might have we might end up coming up with a couple of weird things because of this. Yeah. Because it's it's the discrepancy in the number available is a big point um, here. Like yeah. if you look at uh, the Chirico or Sanders, there's 1,300 of these for sale, right? No, this is literally probably the least wanted moment on the platform is the Sanders. Yeah. No offense to him, but it's still $7 right now. And that's fine because people are trying to collect their set and it is still selling. I've watched clearly that people are buying them. Yeah. Um, and and this moment might actually spike at some point during a fight, but the volume is just not going to be there. So do I think you need to be stacking Sanders? No, I just no, don't. Definitely not. I just don't. I don't see a big future for it. I he's just it's just not the way to go. Now, Pimblet, his price could do one of two things. It could skyrocket after his next fight. And the hype trend keeps moving. He's got a great YouTube channel. If you can see right now, there's only 713 of them for sale. After uh, they drop the Adesanya moment, this might, you know, rise up to a thousand though. Like people will be like, yeah. okay, I have doubles. This might rise up to more than a thousand. This might rise up to who knows, you know, like 2K. Yeah. yeah. 24,000 minted. And that was my original thought. Um, I bought a couple moments, but I was like, you know what, before I really go ham, I'm actually going to wait till there's more listings because I think the saturation will cause them to go down. And I'm just glad I scooped like the Nagano and Pimblet at the prices they were um, to complete my set because, yeah, like I, I paid 20 something for a Pimblet and I was even like, uh, I think I might be paying a little too much for this thing. Beca but clearly i wasn't because now he's up to 33 and like you said i mean if he has if he does well in his next fight it could pop off even more i mean i just went ahead and tried to buy this one we'll see what happens <laughs> um 33 is like if you here's a here's a good way i like to look at it jeb mm -hmm. is when i'm looking at their numbers if they're on the verge here all right i got it so i'll add that to my thing but i got oh. one for 33 it's still it's a twenty thousand, but doesn't really matter with him because yeah. I could easily sell this for 35 and I know that for a fact. And if you look at the number, it's just that there's a lack of volume at this moment. Mm -hmm. What happens, what has happened every single night in this platform, which is very interesting, it shows how much of a global sport it is. It happens a lot like this with NFTs as well. 
you'll go to bed at the end of the night. People will see how much the prices run up during the day. And they'll be like, oh, I need to capitalize on the gains I've made. They'll start listing things, selling things. Things will drop. And then when you go to bed, the global market will start to wake up. Other places besides you will be waking up. And all of a sudden, you'll wake up to like, I mean, you've gone up 10 bucks. It's happened every single night with all of these fighters. And we've I mean, seen that, we've seen all that in the Top big Cut fighters. Too. We've seen that in yes. Top Cut too. I mean, I literally just bought a James Harden all-star moment for under 200 uh, like two nights ago, a, a night ago, something like that. And then I woke up to it being 230 and I bought it at night because it was like, yeah, this is when moments are the cheapest. Yes, it's it's a hundred percent true. So the the time for you to get the most bang out of your buck and spending that extra, you have what three hundred dollars left to go, two two hundred and fifty dollars yeah. left to go. Around that much, yeah. So let's talk about how to get to that two hundred and fifty, right? First of all, your first two hundred and fifty, if you didn't buy any packs, you're it just buying the set alone right now is about to cost you five hundred bucks. So you can basically buy the entire set plus one extra and you'll you'll be there if if you didn't buy a single pack and you still want that israel i would say buy all of series zero and buy yeah. an extra chamaev i just i mean guys it's i hate to be a rider of this person but the dude is insane i mean he's like like we talked about in another video he's been he's won more fights uh, by fun. decision than he's ever been hit in Incredible. all of his pro career so it's insane. I mean, it's he's he's insane. He has a long career ahead of him. He's extremely talented, extremely tough, and everybody in the UFC talks about him like they're terrified of him and he's he's of he is a rookie. I mean, he is a fledgling. You know, that's a big deal. So, I would say it's very easy to just buy the set, buy the extra Chamayev. You could have been buying Chamayev at $35 two days ago. He he got his hit he hit up to 95 selling like hotcakes and then yeah. he's crashed back down right now to uh like I think it was 70, 75. Right? Yeah. Um he's crashed up back down to to around the mid 70s. However, that's what he crashed to last night. But mm-hmm. then also I woke up to him at 93 again. So I yes. I honestly feel like it's going to do this constant thing where People during the day try to sell off a little bit and make a little bit of extra money, especially those people who are buying at like 70. They're yeah. gonna, yeah, they're gonna be like, oh, I made 20 bucks off of every Chamayev I bought. And then it's gonna rise back up as people who bought in at 90 don't sell. I think Chamayev is one of the best ones to hold on to after the dump because even if you lose $30 on it, okay, let's look at $30 on a fire that might be the next, might be like with the hype around him could be the greatest champion of all time. Yeah. Yes, it is hype, but you're looking at, you're looking at, you could have the debut on a series zero set of the next greatest champion of all time. Like that's crazy. I think the other thing that's important to note is, so there's, I think with the UFC more than any other sport, like, NFL all day or NBA top shot volatility is going to be potentially crazy. Like if a play, if someone gets a crazy knockout, their moment could just take off to the moon. If someone gets knocked out, like, like Ben Askren did with the knee to the head, right. his moment could just absolutely tank to being worthless. Chemayev is one of those moments where I think it suffers from a lot less volatility because he's such a great fighter. I don't think you see it go skyrocketing down. Like, I think it stays relatively stable. If he takes a win, I think it can go up a bit. But I don't think the post Adesanya sell off is going to hit his moment nearly as hard as it might hit someone else's. I 1000% agree with you. I think this is the safest moment to buy on the platform, especially if you can get it in that $70 range. Yeah, yeah, if you're buying it at the top of 94, we already know the top now, which has been about $95. If you're buying at the top, it could drop down to 50. If you're buying it at 75 and it drops down to 50 after the Adesanya thing, you still, okay, you lost $25 in order to get a really, really great moment that's going to be worth a lot more than that 25 you lost. And a yeah. moment that you want to hold on to, it's not about flipping, right? Yeah. 
the flipping part of Chemayev happened right off the right off the bat when people really had no idea what to expect or who, who to buy, right? So yeah. I think that this is the safest bet if you're just like, I just want to get to the $500 spend. I'll buy five of these or six of these. We'll call it good. You yeah. Know, or I'll buy my set and buy one of the one extra. Yeah. And for the non UFC people who maybe are watching this video trying to learn something, I think one of the best comparisons of Chemayev is probably like he's like kind of like the LeBron or the Giannis of ufc strike actually i actually said this in in a chat with uh, uh the shot talking crew i actually compare him to like a luca like oh, just okay. incredibly talented like not flashy really just like an amazing like but but other people who are great in the game like mm -hmm. lebron would say to luca like oh yeah i want him as to be like i want to sponsor him he's the dude I, I would can I would put him in that range, which okay. we all know what Luca's done. You know what I mean? Because like he has he doesn't have the accolades yet of a LeBron. That's the only Makes reason sense. I wouldn't say. But yes, as a young LeBron, hundred percent, he's okay. a young yeah, LeBron. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point because I, I I sometimes just forget because I've watched LeBron my whole life that LeBron his the the end of his career is what's on Top Shot. While right. like you said, with all these fighters, one thing that's really cool is a lot of them. It's like probably the beginning of their career, which yeah. like you said, gives them some longevity and gives you something to get excited about, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Now let's speak about that for like, for you, for like, what could we do that might be like, okay, this would be somewhat valuable. So here's a weird thing. A lot of these moments, like a uh, uh, buys right now at $7 is pretty good because earlier today and most days she's selling for nine. So you mm -hmm. could literally just be buying and flipping this for a dollar profit um, regular, like a dollar twenty five or whatever. The, it's still not one I would like to hold long term, but I don't think it's ever going to go much lower than five dollars. So you're not losing a ton. But if you have to stack up five hundred dollars worth of moments, I just don't want that many buys no, you know, in I my collection so either. Yeah. And I, th I think that's one thing that you pointed out that's interesting is so far the floor that we've really seen consistently is $5. We really haven't seen anything stay below that, uh, which is something to consider. And then two moments I really actually wanted to talk to you about, because I think they're in interesting positions is the first one's McKinney. So let's go to, let's go to McKinney. McKinney. I know McKinney has a fight coming up. And he's actually the underdog in this fight, which makes things extra interesting. I think McKinney is going for about 18 right now. Uh, yeah, he's he, his top was at okay, oh, yeah, perfect. 19. So here's another good thing to look at. There is actually, he's, I mean, he's essentially 20. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's go back to the marketplace and let's look at McKinney. And McKinney also, this is a thing that's really important to look at is look how many are being sold. There's only 571 of these available. A lot yeah. of those are, are for like $10,000, guys. Remember that. There's a bunch of meme numbers in that too. So there's actually probably 300 that are listed at reasonable prices, and yeah. the rest are like 100 plus. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's crazy low number which is why his number keeps spiking like crazy. A big reason why his number keeps spiking like crazy is, Jeb, you really liked it because the entire fight is in this moment. Yes. Right? That's it's a seven-second knockout. It's the fastest in his division. It's like the fourth fastest in UFC history, um, which is crazy to think that there was three other fights that ended quicker than this because it's just <laughs> so fast. I know. Uh, the dude is a machine. He's young. He has a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. um, and he fights this weekend. Yeah. Right. So I think a lot of people, I think the reason we see that listing number so low is because a lot of people are speculative buying. And a lot of people, like we said, have hundreds to spend in order to get that out of Sonia. So they're like, well, if McKinney, who I believe he's the underdog on the card, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he's the underdog. I mean, if he pulls off that victory, just boom, like this moment is that much more valuable and now you've stacked a bunch of them and you get the adesanya moment which is what you actually wanted in the first place right so, quick note i went on sure dog today to check out mckinney's fights he might be an underdog but it's barely i think it's probably like a whatever a minus 
whatever 150 tops i didn't realize this about him he's won a lot of fights Mm -hmm. he has not had a fight last past a minute and 30 seconds in like seven fights even outside of he just goes and knocks people out like he for for how small like he's really huge for his division for this lightweight division like he's 155 pounder but he is really big for 155 pounds really long uh i watched his backstory he comes from a long line of wrestling champion or you know state champion wrestler he's 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 a badass i mean he's really cool and uh when watching how he's pretty humble because he almost died he actually Mm -hmm. did die twice uh in in this crazy freak accident and uh at the end of high school and now he's become very dedicated to what he's doing he's young he has a long career this isn't only his first year fighting this is his legitimate debut fighting it's legitimately one of the fastest knockouts of all time like i there's so much upside to this that yeah if you spend 20 dollars now and it drops down to 10 okay you lost 10 bucks but you also got a fighter that if he continues on this path could be a real fan favorite down the road and could be worth a lot more than that you know interesting Okay, I that, that you taught me some new things I didn't know, and I I done a little research on McKinney, and I've seen some of his fights, and yeah, like we saw, I think he was going for under ten or around ten at first. And I bought three he, of them for eight dollars. Wow, and we recently saw him just take a spike up, and I think part of it is because his fights coming, and people want to bet on him to win. He is the only he is the only fighter that we're going to see fight before uh the adesanya drop yeah, right exactly. because his fight is this weekend mm-hmm. um so i think this is going to be a big indicator like this is going to be a fun this is almost like gambling right yeah it, which ufc strike is going to be more fun than a lot of than than even nba top shot than nfl all day because they're literally buying fighters before a fight is saying i'm betting on this fighter because yeah. if they win, the hype after that is going to pump and everybody's going to be excited and they're going to want to jump into it. And I love that about the sport. So if you really believe in a fighter, if you really start to pay attention to what they're doing, I, to be completely honest, I wouldn't have looked so much into McKinney if it wasn't for the fact that UFC Strike made this moment. Mm. And now I feel like I'm so invested in all of these fighters, like more so than I even was before. I Yeah, I knew a lot of them, but like McKinney, he's only had one fight. And it, yeah, I knew it was a good fight, but I didn't know. I didn't go back and look at his backstory. I didn't go look at his amateur record. Now I really care about these fighters. And I think that's what UFC Strike is going to do for a lot of people is they're going to look into these people. Yeah. No, I, I 100% agree. I How many McKinney's do you have? I have three right now. I have seven. Wow. Nice. I think, yeah. So do you think, so you think right now, if you don't, if you already have, let's, we're assuming that, People watching this already have series zero on on a scale of one to 10. Where would you put uh, a McKinney buy right now? It's hard, man. I I haven't been buying him since he's been above $15. I did buy, uh, I think I bought one at 15 um, because I saw his floor and how, how quickly his four, like at 15, he had like three 16s, 117 and 18 and, and then it was like a giant floor of 20. So yeah. if you look at his floor, I really like to treat these as any like NFT. If you look at his floor, look how big the 20 is. Okay. Yeah, the 20 goes cool. forever. Yeah. So uh, I do believe that's where his price tag sticks. So a really good thing I've been doing is like, okay, these 19, sure, you'll make not even a dollar because if you sell it, you won't quite make your 19 back. Mm-hmm. But, um, if he falls down and somebody's trying to flash sale it, even at 17, like 16, which people will do constantly. Yeah. I've oh, been yeah. buying crazy low prices randomly. I I almost got it in Ganu for nine dollars when his floor was 60. Wow. Uh yeah, barely missed. It. I mean, barely missed it. Uh, so just keep refreshing your UFC strike, guarantee that you'll see a couple of 17, 16s. That's an easy pickup because his floor is probably really stuck at $20, at least until that fight's over. And if he loses that fight, yeah, this this moment's probably going down at least $5. You're still looking at a... This is what I like because this is, you actually turned me on to this moment more than I was into this moment. 
But the fact yeah. that you were like, I love the fact the whole fight is in it. Yeah. I love the fact that it's a debut. It's a knockout. It's a good, it's a good moment, man. It's a it's really an good moment. Incredible knockout. The slow-mo where he gets the one, two, like both shots. Oh, just so like, easy. yeah. It's not, it's not a glancing shot, like boom. Boom. Oh no, he just it's it's like, gross. It it's like gross. A flawless moment, in my opinion. We and the funny thing is, like, this dude is a wrestler, and we just only see him knock people out. <laughs> yeah. So we don't even know what happens when he goes into deep water. Um Speaking of deep water, let's let's back off here because I love this. I love this pack. Here's one of the most underrated freaking moments on the damn platform is uh, well, Michael Chandler is definitely underrated, but he he was he was sitting at like nine and ten dollars forever, and that's crazy. Now at fourteen dollars, it make, makes sense. He's kind of found his home at fourteen. Where's my boy? Where's my boy? Where's Gaethje? Guys, Gaethje was like criminally underpriced at like $18 forever. Wow. This dude is he said he doesn't care. He's an he is a champion wrestler. This is the greatest fight of the year of last year beating Iron Mike Chandler who is uh, again I think a uh, very underrated in this platform already. He also is 100% a showman. He's got a title fight coming up in the toughest division of all time. He's beaten everybody you need to beat. The dude is a B. Sorry if you can't cuss on your channel, Jeb, but the dude is insane. And he he literally said, I won't wrestle a guy. I will fight them because this is a show sport. This isn't about rest. This isn't about winning. It's about putting on a show. So you're talking wow. about the most violent person in the in the UFC who everybody loves to watch. Why? Why? And he's a champion. Like he's going to be a champion. He was an interim champion. Like why why was his moment nineteen eighteen dollars and you were buying McKinney's for twenty at that point? Finally, people have started to catch up and we're seeing twenty four twenty five. I think he should easily stick it at least twenty five dollars. But dude, if you want to hold on to something and and you want something that's not going to go anywhere, Justin Gaethje's freaking debut moment is not going down that much. Buy Justin Gaethje's. Perfect. And then another moment I wanted to look at with you and get your opinion on was um oh, what's his name starts with an n he has that guy right there is that cool so okay so this is one of the only moments i haven't been stacking and i I, mean, I kind of feel bad about it because i actually went back and started looking at his story mm -hmm. uh recently again another fighter that th this uh light heavy weight because we we already have uh rakic and we have uh jiri uh Perhuska, and we have we have all these fighters that are like actually contenders. And then yeah. we have this young dude and it's not his debut fight. So I kind of like put it out of my head, but the dude is young. And it was a savage knockout of a guy. He was highly like, he's also Nigerian, which is like Nigerians have been taking over the sport. If you haven't noticed, uh, they're the champions in every division basically. So anyways, I went back and looked at his story. He's got a very interesting one. His he takes care of his mom in a single apartment who got ALS. He started looking into fighting since he was like 12 years old. At 20 years old, he went into a gym. He's 28 right now. He had never thrown a punch before. He just always watched fighting. Wow. Really humble guy, very religious guy, very dedicated to the craft and very dedicated to uh, his spirituality and to taking care of his mother. And so now I feel like bad for not stacking his moments and he has a fight coming up and he is a ferocious beast of a man. I would never want to fight this guy, except for he's probably the nicest person I've ever heard talk. So it's like, but look at these punches. I mean, he's nasty. So the reason I think this is a good moment to stack is because one, he does have a fight coming up. Not very many people know this backstory. The problem is he's so far down on the card. I don't really think very many people will know. Like they're not going to hear this. It's not going to be like he's on it on like a pay per view where everybody gets their own promo. Yeah. So you're not going to hear the story unless you actually look into it. But at yeah. eight dollars, how much can he go down? That's that's, that's, that's what thing. I was thinking. Is he has a fight coming up, and like we've seen that the floor is around five bucks. So. If he loses that fight, worst case scenario, he goes to like maybe five. 
But if he wins, that's just him taking another step towards building his career and building his like brand. And to get in on the ground floor is a pretty awesome opportunity. Exactly. And what we've been talking about this whole time is I really believe that uh, in so many people in the UFC discord and, and, uh, and, and just people I know in our discord and people on Twitter have been like, they screwed up way high, way too high immense and fighters that nobody cares about. No, not fighters that nobody cares about. Literally, they, these are fighters that really have potential down the road. So yeah. I, I think that they wouldn't have put Kennedy on here unless there was some potential. Here's the other thing I like about Kennedy. $8, $8. What's this floor? Five or like 10, maybe 10, $8 moments. Then you got another 10 to 29 dollar moments maybe not even that many and then you're at 10 i think this is such an easy buy at eight dollars to just grab a couple and yeah. not feel bad if you lose three dollars on four of them okay that kind of sucks but whatever he's still selling he hasn't dipped below eight dollars he was at seven dollars for two days now he's been at eight dollars for two days I think this is an easy pickup. I'm actually going to stack a few. I wasn't stacking him. And I think after today's research, I'm going to stack some Kennedys, man. I think this dude rocks, actually. And he's a super nice guy. Yeah. And I I think the... I think... And the fight coming we, up is fun. Yeah, I think we have two upcoming examples of a fighter who's on UFC strike getting it, having a fight like very soon. And I think the interesting thing is I don't think many people maybe fully grasp how crazy that moment might be able to go if they win, especially if they win in like dominating fashion with like a crazy KO. Like McKinney right here. Yeah, exactly. So the thing is like if there was a – if you believe in UFC strike, if you're trying to spend that $500 to get that out of Sonya, why not bet on someone early? Like these two guys have their fights coming up. You can bet on them. The Adesanya fight happens, and hopefully if they both won, they've gone up. And then you can flip that and use those profits to maybe get a couple moments that you also wanted or stack the next fighter who's going to fight or something like that. I think um, people right now are like – you have two people. You have people that are NFT people that or Dapper people or Top Shop people or whatever you want to call them that are like, oh, I trust Dapper. Dapper makes a quality product. I'm going to – I'm going to – buy these moments because I believe in Dapper, not because I'm a huge UFC fan. And then on the other side, you have UFC fans who are hardcore. They know everything about the UFC, but they don't understand how the NFTs work. They, they're not super familiar with Top Shot or, or like going on OpenSea and like checking, checking NFTs. So right now, the very few people that have kind of both of those pieces where they understand the UFC – they know these fighters and they have experience with top shot and stuff. I think can capitalize the most. And the easiest way to do that is buying fighters that are going to be fighting soon. For example, we had the all-star game people like myself and people that I talked to in like different discords and stuff. We were buying all the, all the players in the three point contest, all the players in the dunk competition, making sure we had one of each of those. Cause we knew there would be something involving them. And I mean, we don't know if challenges are coming out with the UFC strike or what, but buying moments of, of fighters who will be fighting soon, I feel like is just a no brainer. Um, and just being able to check just even like from a math perspective, not even emotionally like being connected to fighters or like knowing these fighters super well or their backstory or being fans or rooting against them, just checking the schedule and seeing who's fighting that has a UFC strike moment and looking at the odds and being like, do I want to take this gamble on a fighter that like potentially could have this long storied career and become like a huge personality in the UFC? Do I want to get on the ground floor before they even have a single fight um, after their UFC strike mo moment was minted? You know? Yeah. That, I mean, dude, like, let's, let's be real. Like, think about it. If you could go back in time and, you could say if this was around or if you bought uh, cards, everybody understands that if they could buy, uh, you know, Conor McGregor's 
rookie card, they would be like, holy. Sh I mean, dude, it's literally yeah. the Mickey Mantle of fighting right now. You know, it's like it's not he's not the great in my mind, not the greatest fighter of all time, but he's done the most for the sport. Yeah. In, as, the for, in a mind, long time. In, in a, the public's yeah. mind, he's the greatest fighter of all time. And that's what yes. matters short term uh, for the UFC. And like you said, he's done the most for the sport in that sense. Everyone knows who Conor McGregor is. Yeah. But you have to remember that there's now kids growing up doing mixed martial arts since they were kids. Like these kids, oh, yeah. like some of these dudes, like Ian Gary, they're young kids that have been growing up and they've only watched. They didn't decide to go to football. They didn't decide to play soccer. They didn't decide to do this. They decided to fight since they were kids. We're talking about a whole new level of athletes. Speaking of whole new level of, of athletes, that's why uh, Rakic, I think, is the one of the most underrated people on the platform. I wish I would have called this out on my top 10 earlier. You could buy this dude for $9 the other day. He did end up getting up to 15 about 14 or 15. This guy's a number one contender, everyone. This guy is literally like, like let's look at Yuri. Yuri is at 35. He was at four, almost $40 at one point. He's fighting for the belt, but that he actually passed over. He only has like three fights in the UFC. He actually mm -hmm. passed over Rakic, who is should be the number one contender, should be fighting for the belt. He's fighting in Columbus in March. He's got so he's got a fight actually coming up. If he wins it, there's absolutely no way he's not fighting for the belt next, no matter who wins it, Glover or Yuri. He has called out Yuri a million times. He's one of the strongest most athletic like his whole life he's dreamed of doing this and being champion i watched mm -hmm. a few interviews with him he is the most intense person i've ever seen this guy's getting slept on and look at that head kick just yeah. straight ko the this guy's a badass takes, the athleticism it takes to just hit that one two with the leg kick there is like insane and he makes it look just effortless and like the pinpoint striking ability is like so apparent even just in this like strike moment which is crazy just Dude, one two he, boom he's insane and and think about this you're talking about a possible champion i mean i know he's got to win two fights he's got to win his next fight in march and then he's got to beat the winner of glover and yuri but the dude is been wrecking everybody in the division right yeah. and he is a top five fighter he is number truly he's actually the number one contender and yet he's twelve dollars like I, that yeah. just doesn't make sense. Like, why? Why if yeah. why is year because Yuri's fighting for? I mean, Yuri is very interesting, and people really like his look. He's like the I'm a samurai guy, and I like him too. But he's had three fights in the UFC compared to uh, Rakic, who I think has fought five in the UFC. I think he's won all. of I think maybe he lost one. But uh, and this is a really aggressive knockout too. His cool elbow, but yeah. at the same time, it's not. Like, do you think there should really be a discrepancy? Twelve to thirty-five dollars. Like, no. it just feels like it's there's a bad a gap, gap there. So it feels I, like I a agree. way you could capitalize on on a win. And if he wins in March, which people are not thinking about because it's a little bit further away, but if he wins in March, you're looking at a big steal. Now, if Yuri loses at two seventy-four, you're looking at a big dip. Mm -hmm. You even you even might be looking at a big dip on Yuri after the Adesanya drop. But if you're buying a twelve dollar moment, you're probably not looking at a huge dip, right? What yeah. would it dip to? Nine? Yeah, eight, nine, maybe at the worst, maybe yeah. seven for a bit. But yeah, no, I I agree, and that was one of the ones when you when you gave me a quick like breakdown on who he was because he was one of the fighters I didn't I'm not super super in depth aware of, but you gave me a, a breakdown, and I didn't even need you to send the last text before I was like, okay, I'm gonna go buy a couple of these. Because, like you said, number one contender, once again, like we said with all these ones that we're pointing out, you're getting in on the ground floor. Like, if you want to bet on someone, you want to bet on them early. Like, you don't buy a Tom Brady rookie card when he goes to Tampa Bay after he's won a bajillion Super Bowls. Right. You want to you want to bet on Tom Brady when Bill Belichick bet on Tom Brady, you know? Like, that's yep. the best time to do it. And once again this is the best time where all these fighters are contenders and they they're very young. They're just starting their careers and maybe not a lot of people are aware of them or who have really done the research to understand that they might like pop off 
Sorry, I had to throw a buy in there real quick because, <laughs> oh, uh, dude, Taporia at 13 for a four digit um, is if it say if I get the sale, he's easily a $15. I know it's only a $2 push, but mm -hmm. tomorrow morning I could sell the same moment for 15, whatever. Yeah, like Ooh. he's just 11 and 0. This is another fighter that like you shouldn't sleep on. I, and I'm addicted to the sport. I'm addicted to buying these moments. I really need to update the two that I bought on. I don't. What was the other one I bought th since we were on here? I don't uh, have to go back and look. I forgot who it was. But um, the oh, the last oh, one Gates I want to say, huh? I think it was the Gaethje that you bought. Oh, did I buy another Gaethje? Yeah, I dude, I'm so. really obsessed with Gaethje. I've been watching <laughs> like I've been watching a lot of stuff on Gaethje. I wasn't a huge Gaethje fan before. Here, I want to do a quick, a couple quick uh, things, and we'll wrap it up. We don't want to take all your time, but uh, Derek Lewis, uh, off of a couple of uh, uh, fight losing streak, still he's like a top five fighter, man. He is like a heavyweight that people love. He's a Houston native. He's had a bad go of it lately. He had an epic war with Tai Tuivasa. Uh, in this last UFC event, twelve dollars is disrespectful. Hmm. To be completely honest, for him. Um, well, quick and, question off of that: Do you think two Avasa is too cheap after that elbow knockout to Lewis? Because he's only at twenty. I was kind of surprised he's so low. Well, he's hit twenty-five. I think he has an easy run up to twenty-five again. Not okay. going to be hard. Two, the problem with two of Vasa right now is he's become he's been put into an, an entirely different division now of fighters who are why like he has to just hit like he has to he two of Vasa doesn't have a history of fighting I don't know if you know this but two of Vasa yeah. actually is very new to the sport but mm -hmm. he is very determined and he went to Abu Dhabi trained there solely so he didn't have to like he could stay away from the drinking he could stay away from the the like family issues or the friends and he could focus only on fighting and the heart he showed against uh Derek lewis was amazing in this last fight and that's why i'm rooting for him that's why everybody roots for him he is a fun super awesome guy who's like really willing to learn but he's yeah. a knock he's a he's a brawler and and now you're talking about guys in his division where another very disrespectful, to be completely honest, disrespectful number on somebody's price is uh, where is he? Cyril that? gone. Oh, gone. Gone is. I mean, I've been buying gones every time. I I can buy gones all day at fifteen dollars. Like here's one that just got posted for nineteen. I'm telling you guys, I've been buying gones at fifteen dollars. The fact that Cyril gone, the number one contender. Right. Okay. So besides Ngannou, who's a champ, mm -hmm. Gone is still number one. Uh, besides Francis Ngannou, Francis Ngannou cannot fight for at least another year. In fact, we don't even know if he will sign with the UFC ever again. We're in a weird spot with Francis Ngannou. We won't know that for a while. I think Francis Ngannou is one of the ones that I haven't been putting a lot of money into because I kind of think it'll dip after a while. I could be way wrong because he is a legend, mm -hmm. but. It's like hard to jump into the hype of him right now. Where Cyril Gone just lost nineteen dollars, dude, for the number one heavyweight contender is just the dude's gonna be around for a while. He's 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 an incredible heavyweight. Like he's yeah. gonna be in the top five for a long time. So even if he never like puts a belt around his waist, he's gonna be in contention or in the talks of the top five, and he's gonna be fighting the same guys over and over again. And the problem with Tuavasa is, can Tuavasa bang with somebody like a heavyweight kickboxer that fights like a light heavyweight? You know, like mm -hmm. that that is fast and quick. And the fact that Tuavasa is twenty one bucks and Cyril gone, you can literally sit here and keep refreshing and buy one for fifteen, guaranteed. Is it's hard for me to say? I I think that's undervalued, mm -hmm. and I'm not a huge Cyril gone fan, but I think it's undervalued. Okay. Yeah. No, I like I like that a lot. Real quick, just to end it, real quick. Things that I think might be a little overvalued. You might want to put your money into that far. At thirty five dollars, Patty Pimblet, probably not the buy. Right. I'm just gonna let you guys know right now, real quick. Patty Pimblet is probably not the buy. In my opinion, fifty three dollars for Francis is not the buy. Um, I think sure. that 
some of these guys are getting to their top where it's like, I don't know if you should, I don't know if you buy McKinney's right now at $20, unless you're just willing to gamble on the fight that's coming up. And that will be fun. But if he loses that fight, I see him having one of the biggest falls. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the ones that like Barboza has got a fight coming up, but he's fighting against a guy that I think is incredible. And I think they've, they're feeding Barboza to him. And two of us, uh, I don't know. I still think all these are fine buys. I just don't think they're going to fall that far. But yeah. you have a chance for these to go over the next year, raise a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and just the fact that it's Series Zero, like we said at the very beginning, like just make sure you complete the set. Like if you're interested in this at set. all, get, get the, the set. set. Like it is such a rare opportunity. If you're someone who's brand new to like NFTs, um, and UFC strikes like your first introduction to NFTs, getting the first set of anything is always very important. And if you're someone coming from Top Shot, but you don't understand Series Zero or like UFC at all, well, you know that Series One and Top Shot is worth so much and ran up so much from the beginning of when it released. And maybe, maybe uh, UFC strike doesn't go as high. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, the NBA is currently a bigger sport than UFC strike or the UFC is. But I, like like Seth said, there there is going to be a run-up over time, especially when Series 1, Series 2 start coming out. And these debut moments of young fighters, a lot of them with their debut fights, are going to be harder to get your hands on. So especially if you're trying to get that out of Sonya, make sure you have series zero all the way. Make sure you're looking at the schedule of when fighters are fighting and maybe how big of an underdog they are, or if they're super favored, because it might be a good idea to get a couple more of those before the fight starts um, or before people even it's on their radar. Um, but, but just also just people that we, you really think have long-term, even if they lose their next fight, you're not really worried about the, the long-term like, yeah. uh, Hamza Chamayev is just not going to be a person right now. I truly believe that if you invest your $75 into them, that you're not going to return, get that return later on down the road. Again, remember, think Luka Doncic, think, uh, LeBron James. He, he really is that good. So, yeah. Yeah, he's the undisputed probably best fighter in the UFC right now. No one can even touch him yet. And until someone figures that out, he's probably your safest bet in terms of volatility. Because you're not we're probably not going to see him just take fall off a cliff because him losing is very, very unlikely. Um, but like like we said too, and like Seth pointed out, I think the biggest thing is that these guys are all young fighters for the most part. So if you're buying a Gary. If you're buying a, a, a Kennedy, if you're buying a McKenney, if you're buying a Pimblet, like if they lose a fight, their career isn't over. You're exactly right. That's their career huge. is not over at all. Yeah. Like, Which is different they, with Barboza and things like yeah. that, where we have a couple of fighters in here who are just like, Barboza, they've been in the Sanders, sport for a long time and Lewis. they've lost a lot. It, they're not, they're never making a title run anymore. In yeah. my, I don't think they would ever make a title run, but they're 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 journeymen, they're legends in the sport, but they're just not, yeah, they're not your, the thing. Yeah, but but Gary McKenney, Kennedy Chamayev, like I mean, there's Chandler a lot. even Chandler Gaethje, like there's a lot of young fighters here where you can kind of you're you're getting the opportunity to bet on them right out the gate. Uh, and I think that's a pretty exciting opportunity if you believe in NFTs at all, if you believe in Dapper, if you believe in the UFC, uh, if you're willing to take that gamble, if you're trying to get that out of Sanya, it is not a bad idea to stack some of these moments. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. And if you really have the money, if you buy one of these Series Zero Champ moments, oh, yeah, bro, you're, you're good. The that's the shortcut. To, that's a shortcut. That's, to that's getting a shortcut to your five hundred dollars. And honestly, I, the the people who have the baddest baddest collections I've seen so far on Evaluate Market were the people who were like willing to drop a thousand dollars on day one, and they picked up like Nunez for six hundred and fifty bucks, a Moreno for five hundred, uh, you know, and like these are probably pretty settled prices for the time being. 
mm-hmm. I don't think these prices are going to change that much. Uh, like in the in the short term, I think in the long term, though, these prices are going to keep going up, like the LeBron James's and like the things that we've seen yeah. from other sports. Yeah, a one out of seventy five is like a crazy, crazy of a series zero of a series like, zero. Yeah. One out of yeah. seventy five, and if you look at the listings, like a third of them are listed. It does not take that long. It doesn't take that many buys for that percentage to go way down. Yep. You know? Yeah. So, Seth, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. I love talking UFC with you. I hope everyone who is watching was able to get some more out of this um, and learn more about the UFC and UFC strike and kind of how they want to attack that 500 net spin you have to hit. If you have any questions, if there's any fighters you're really hyped about, if you have any moments that you're thinking of stacking, if you have any strategies, like all that stuff, like leave it in the comments below. I love talking UFC. Seth is going to be in there too, I'm sure, spitting some knowledge. But yeah, I mean, I think me and Seth are going to continue to make a lot of UFC content. Uh, and yeah, it, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah wait till we do the all-star ufc match i can't wait to just <laughs> dude are we rolling together is that what's gonna happen we're yeah gonna do some jiu-jitsu? No, we'll be the tag we'll be a tag team in the i like the, that okay the nft nice. all-star yeah because neither of us are in fighting shape but the two no, of us not yet <laughs> tag me in I'll, I'll i'll lay down some i'll lay down some damage sure. i like it yeah so yeah thanks everyone make sure to like comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time please clap